Hi, I'm Chris Clark. I'm a solution architect with FlexManage, and today we're going to be talking about Azure AD Premium and conditional access. So I've been working with Office 365 for about five years now, and when it originally came out, it was designed to be an anytime, anywhere solution. Now, what Microsoft has found that uh, the current reality of devices being anywhere, data being anywhere, and also having access anytime, anywhere has brought up many concerns about security and compliance. And one of the components in EMS that's designed to address this is called Azure AD Premium. So today we're going to be talking about Enterprise Mobility and Security, or EMS. EMS was actually recently renamed from Enterprise Mobility Suite to Enterprise Mobility and Security. We're also going to be talking about the current reality of hybrid environments and how identity has become the core of Enterprise Mobility. We're going to see some of the features of conditional access and different scenarios that it provides and also see the admin and user experience during a hands-on demo. So EMS has been renamed to Enterprise Mobility and Security, and it's actually broken up into two different plans. There's EMS E3 and EMS E5. Now, any uh, organizations that had EMS um, originally with their current tenant will be converted to EMS E3, and then E5 is actually a premium offering. So EMS E3 has the major pillars of the original Enterprise Mobility Suite, including Azure Active Directory Premium, Microsoft Intune, Azure Information Protection, which is the new name for Azure RMS, and Microsoft Advanced Threat Analytics, or ATA. The E5 suite builds upon each different pillar in EMS and provides more of a premium feature set. So if we look at EMS E5, you have Azure Active Directory Premium, P2, which gives identity and access management features above and beyond P1. Azure Information Protection, which automates the Azure Information Protection in P2. And Microsoft Cloud App Security. So EMS is really designed as a full suite of products that integrate. So looking at one isn't necessarily going to give you all the features and benefits uh, versus how tightly integrated they are. So Microsoft has really designed an ecosystem with the Enterprise Mobility and Security Suite. If we look at this diagram, we have Azure Active Directory Identity Protection, we have Cloud App Security, Intune, Azure Information Protection, and Advanced Threat Analytics. So you can see the flow of data and identity and the different products that it really entails to look at the security aspects or compliant aspects as a whole, to protect data, to protect devices, and to protect your user identities. So this diagram is a possible representation of your current environment. When we have multiple cloud applications, multiple devices accessing those cloud applications, you have your on-premises legacy applications, you have some managed devices possibly that are enrolled in uh, mobile device management or another device management solution. And you have Active Directory or another directory system for identities. So you might have managed devices, but you might have in the middle there unmanaged devices accessing these cloud applications. So really the reality is, is how can we control this? And that's where uh, Azure Active Directory premium conditional access comes into play. So what Microsoft has seen now is that identity has become the core of enterprise mobility. What this means is that protecting identities uh, within the cloud or on premises and in hybrid environments has become one of the main focuses of CIOs, even CEOs, because a identity breach has become a CEO level issue. So with identities in regards to Office 365 and other cloud applications, what Azure Active Directory Premium allows you to do is sync your on-premises identities from, say, Windows Server Active Directory or other directories like PeopleSoft or SAP up into the Microsoft Azure Active Directory. The premium features allow you to control the access scenarios that we'll be talking about, like conditional access. So some of the common synchronization tools that are used are called DirSync or AD Sync, which is the latest version. 
of DuraSync. This allows you to synchronize a hash of your password up into Azure Active Directory. Other corporations might have the need for Active Directory Federation services for authentication, which instead of syncing a hash of the password, it allows the authentication tokens to come back on premises. So being that uh, identity is the new focus in security, how can we protect you know, the users and devices that are in this cloud environment and also on-prem? So Azure AD Premium Conditional Access is one of the key features for protecting identities in the cloud and hybrid environments. What conditional access allows you to do is look at certain conditions like location, being in an IP range, are you inside or outside of the network. There's also a device state where the device could be registered, could be domain joined, or could be considered compliant. You would have to be part of a certain user group in order to access corporate resources as well. And then also using a risk profile, an example of a Windows 10 PC that wasn't meeting the latest security assurance of having the latest Windows updates. So you can use all these together or a combination thereof and effectively control access to your cloud applications and even on other on-premise applications as well. So Microsoft has designed Windows 10 to work with enterprise mobility and security. Specifically, the latest update for Windows 10, the Windows 10 Anniversary Update, enables all the different conditional access features that we'll see within the demo. So part of Windows 10 is the ability to have Azure Active Directory join. Now, what this allows you to do is really take any Windows 10 device and join it to Azure Active Directory. And by doing so, you can have Intune auto enrollment, other policies can be pushed to the device, so you've effectively taken an off-the-shelf Windows 10 device and enabled compliance, security, and enrollment into your corporate environment. So what we have here is an enterprise mobility and security tenant that I'm logged into as a global administrator. So what we're going to see is the admin experience of how we can set up conditional access for applications that are part of Office 365 and even other cloud applications. So within the Azure AD admin environment, there's actually a couple different versions of this at this point. So I'm logged into manage.windowsazure.com, which might be considered the Azure Classic portal. But soon enough, Microsoft is migrating a lot of the features of Azure AD Premium to portal.azure.com as well. So within the portal here, we have an Applications tab, and what you'll notice here is that some of the Office 365 applications that you might have access to are listed here by default, and then other applications are as well. So with the My Apps gallery of applications and single sign-on, I'm able to add other cloud apps, the Office 365 apps and even on-premises applications using an Azure AD application proxy. So what we want to focus on is we want to protect data access and enable conditional access on Exchange Online. So if I click on Exchange Online, there is a Configure tab. And within that, the conditional access features that just recently went into GA are available in this section. So there are two main conditional access features that are called multi-factor authentication and location-based access rules or device-based access rules. So what this means is that I can prevent a user from accessing corporate data within the cloud applications or Office 365 if they're off my network, for instance. So the location-based access rules allow me to enter in the egress IP points of my public IP connections, and by doing so, I can block access when they're not on the corporate network. Now, also included in location-based access rules are multi-factor authentication. I can require multi-factor authentication when a user is off the network, or I can even require multi-factor authentication at all times. So the second set of access rules that you can use are device-based access rules. And by toggling these on, I'm allowed to say that only certain devices can access cloud applications or on-premises applications 
that are authenticated through Azure Active Directory Premium. These could be domain join, they could be compliant devices, or a combination of both. What this allows me to do is say that if a device is not registered as domain join, it is not allowed to access email through Outlook, through your mobile device, even through Outlook Web App or OWA. What determines that is the application enforcement area below where you have browser native applications or native applications only. So I can still allow have, having OWA access but not having Outlook access where I can download email to any Outlook application. So we've seen how we can protect some of the native Office 365 applications, but we can also protect other cloud applications like Twitter in the next example. So within the same application area as Exchange Online, I have Twitter listed. When I click into Twitter, I'm gonna have the same capabilities to configure Azure AD Premium conditional access, but with another cloud application. So within Configure, we'll see that we have the location-based access rules and MFA rules, or the device-based access rules as well. So in this example, I've only configured the device-based access rules, so when we see on our demo PC, won't have access to Twitter as well as Exchange Online because it's not domain join or a compliant PC. So next I'm going to show a user that's logged into a Windows 10 PC that could represent a user being at home, has their own Windows 10 PC, and they're trying to access corporate resources. Now with conditional access turned on, we'll get to see what the user experience is and how it effectively blocks that access. So I'm logged into the Office 365 portal as the Persona Garth Fort. And within the portal here, I have access to mail, calendar, people, which would really represent Outlook Web Access or the new name for that, Outlook Web App. So what we've done previously as an admin has enabled conditional access to say that if a device is not compliant or domain join, it cannot have access to these resources. So this device itself is also off the corporate network. Um, as well as another location-based access scenario that we could have enabled. So when I click into OWA or the Mail app, I'm effectively blocked from accessing OWA. So you can see that it says your IT department is ensuring that the device is up to date. And with Windows 10, one of the new features is that you can actually enroll Windows 10 directly into Microsoft Intune. So this device, being a home PC, is not enrolled or domain joined, so it does not qualify and conditional access is effectively blocking it. So when I click on more details, we can get some more details showing that we require a compliant or domain joined device and that the device state is registered. So the device state that was a compliant or domain join would, sh would show domain join or compliant as well and it would be allowed access. So now I've effectively blocked complete browser access to Exchange Online. So with conditional access, we've effectively blocked browser access from anywhere to OWA. Next, we'll see how we can block setting up an Outlook profile as well. So logged in the same user, Garth, I'm on the same Windows 10 home PC, and I want to see if I can set up an Outlook profile with Outlook 2016. So when I launch Outlook to configure a new profile, uh, Outlook itself will be contacting Azure AD and assessing essentially the conditions that we mentioned before to see if the device is compliant or domain joined. So when I click on connect, I'm going to get a very similar screen that we saw with OWA that is effectively blocking access and blocking me from setting up my Outlook profile and downloading all my corporate email. So as you can see, you get the same message. IT is ensuring that the device is compliant and up to date. The more details give us the same information that we require a compliant device and the device itself is registered but not domain join or compliant. So now we'll see Twitter from a user perspective uh, from the same Windows 10 PC. So I'm logged into the Azure Active Directory Premium My Apps Gallery, which is a collection of your Office 365 apps, but also other cloud applications. One of these being Twitter. So as a user, being on the same Windows 10 PC, my PC is 
neither considered compliant or domain joined. So this represents again a user's home PC or a Windows 10 PC off the shelf. So when I click into Twitter as a user, we're going to effectively see the same screens that we've seen before with Exchange Online OWA or even setting up an Outlook profile. We've been blocked because the device itself is not compliant or up to date and effectively it's a registered device which is not domain joined uh, or in a compliant state. So because you've used Azure Active Directory Premium to enable the single sign-on link between Twitter and Azure AD, you can enable conditional access and even block other cloud applications. Thank you for watching this demonstration of Azure AD Premium and conditional access. Again, my name is Chris Clark with FlexManage. You can reach me at cclark at flexmanage.com.